Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today I'm going to build a spindle stop to go in my South Bend lathe. The spindle stop is a rod that goes inside your spindle uh, to limit the depth of the stock you're putting in your chuck. Uh, it's really useful, like say if I wanted to cut a snap ring groove in about five or six pieces this length. I could put it in there, hit the spindle stop, lock it down, cut my snap ring groove, put the next piece in, cut that groove in the exact same place. It works the same for facing off the end of stock or cutting it off to length. Uh, it's really a handy thing to have. That's what we're building today, so uh, let's get on with it. Okay, here's a drawing of the uh, spindle stop, or part of it. This is what's going to go in the outboard side of my spindle. And this is where a quarter inch rod is going to go right there. This is going to be a tube, and this is going to go inside that tube to expand. Anyway, uh, that's a total of four, five, six, seven inches. There's a piece of seven and a half inch stock. That's what we're going to use. So the first thing we're going to do is turn. This is full diameter right there. We're going to turn this entire length down to uh, 0.889 inches, which is what the inside bore of my spindle is. Okay, the first thing I want to do is make it so I can run a center in there. So I'm going to drill for a dead center on each end. Now, one inch of this is not going to be turned down, so that's what I'm going to hold in the chuck right there. And this is nothing real critical. I need to have that out just a little more. You could turn this between centers. That would be probably the ideal way to do it. I don't have a center to fit in my spindle here, so. But this will work. I did the math and I got to take off 55 thousandths. So I'm going to go in and touch off and set my dial. Here we go. Let's see where we're at. Okay, I gotta go about seven more thousandths. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit more. Maybe I'll get a better finish. Eight eighty nine. That's exactly where I'm supposed to be. I think that's going to be all right. Let's try that in the spindle. I think it's going to fit all the way in. There's just a lot of dirt way inside there. So now I've got this piece right here. That's what I chucked in my chuck and I got the rest of it turned down to that diameter right there. And that is the maximum diameter I'll need this piece. So now I need to just cut that off right here. Yeah, a little over three there. Okay, the next step will be to bore this out to five-eighths of an inch inside. That's what this diameter will be right there, and that fits inside that. So I need to bore this for five-eighths of an inch. 
It's got a wobble to it. That's a little better. Someday I'll have a collet. Here we go, all the way through. Okay, we basically got that piece done, except for cutting that taper right there. Now we got to turn this piece down to 5 8 diameter and put that taper on the end. So I'm going to turn down part of it 5 8 then turn it around, turn it to 5 8 to right there and then cut that taper. And then we'll drill the whole thing to quarter inch. Got to go 132 thousandths. Twenty-five, thirty-five. That's five more thousands. Got to divide by two. That looks fairly true. Now, we're going to go toward the chuck because I've got to cut a taper right there. And I'm just going to take a, a ruler and measure that by my ruler. Here we are. Needs to be 493. We're going to call that a half inch. Leave a half inch here for our taper. A little bit over. <whistles> Got to reverse my feed. There we go. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to put a center in there. I think it'll be alright. Okay, I am going to put a dead center there for cutting that taper. My drawing says 70 thousandths, or says 15 thousandths, but it's 70 thousandths from 
from the axis of the lathe. So. Hot, hot. That enlarged section will fit inside my chuck. Okay. Let's bore a hole. All the way through. Now all I got to do is make it quarter inch. Okay. We made that before, but we didn't cut the taper in there. We've only got the taper on this piece. So I got to cut a matching taper inside that. To do that, we're going to have to have a boring bar. Compound still set at the same angle, so we should be in good shape there. I may have a to get a smaller boring bar here. I think that'll do it. Okay, there we go. Now those those uh, tapers should match. We're close. Look at that. I like it. I think this piece is basically done. I want to face that off. Get a good flat surface on that. Now this piece, we, we got to cut some 5 8 threads there. 5 8 uh, what? Is 11? I can't remember. I'm going to have to go look it up. I think it's 11. Okay, I got my compound set at uh, 29 and a half. Now I'm cutting a place to stop the threads. And I think that needs to be... I'm going to make it an inch and a half. It's not really critical. 
That's going too fast. Okay. Need to put it in back gear for cutting threads. Don't want to hit my chuck there. And we're okay. Okay, I got a, this is an odd number thread, so on my threading dial I need to throw it in on the even numbers or odd numbers every time. Okay, we're going to speed that up a little bit because uh, it'll make smoother threads faster. I don't think that's deep enough. Oh yes it is. Glad I tried it. Anytime you cut threads, before you try it, it's a good idea to either file or sand down those threads a little bit. There's a burr on the top of the threads. I like it. Okay. There's that piece. There's that piece. Slide into each other. And that makes that expand. Wait a minute. No, it doesn't make that expand. It makes it expand after I cut some slots in there. That's, I've got a mill, but you don't have to have a mill to do this. You can just take a bandsaw and cut in there about that deep. Maybe uh, this way and then th this way, and that will expand. But I've got a mill and I've got some saws. I'm thinking I might cut it with my mill. But if you don't have a mill, bandsaw works fine. Okay, this is a less than ideal setup here. What I'm going to do is touch off. And I've calculated this diameter and the thickness of the saw. And I need to drop it down 457 of it. Yeah. 457 thousandths. So I got my DRO set. And then I'm going to drop that down until it just barely touches. Four fifty seven right there. Okay, I've slowed it down, slowed the mill down. And I've got mist cooling on it. See how this works. Looks like I'm on center. I've also got a stop on my table so I don't run that saw onto my bike. I'm 
now I think what I'm going to do is cut through the end. I've rot rotated that in my vise and used a square to uh, get it at a right angle to the original cut. It's close enough anyway. You, like I said, you could do this with a bandsaw and it'll be just fine. I believe that'll do it. Okay, this thing works amazingly well. My spindle is pretty dirty inside. Got to clean the best I can. Slides in there like that. And I'm going to have to mill a couple of flats on that. That way I can stick a wrench on it like this. And then tighten that. And that is not going anywhere. That hangs on with a vengeance. Now what we're going to have to do now is leave that on there like that. Loctite that on there. Drill through that and put a set screw in there and that'll lock down this depth rod. The reason I want to do that is there's not enough meat there for a set screw and by adding that nut to it that will give me plenty of uh, steel there to thread to. Now to get this thing out if I pull on that it doesn't want to come out. If I pull on this part, it comes out. Just pulling on that expands that enough to uh, stick in the bore. Anyway, that's the next step. Wow. Always good to have a variety of washers. It's probably not necessary to Loctite this. Once I get the set screw through it, the set screw will hold it from rotating. But this will facilitate me drilling that set screw and threading it without anything moving. That should do it. We'll let that set up. Okay, uh... Our Loctite has sat overnight, firmly connected to that bolt right there. I just milled a little flat right there. I didn't really have to do that. I could have drilled, drilled and tapped right there, but it's easier to hold in the vise like that. So now I'm going to drill and tap that for a quarter twenty. Okay, I got a flat tip set screw uh, as opposed to a cup tip or a pointed tip. I don't know how close I can get that. It's got a flat tip on it. Nice to have a supply of those around. It won't mar the rod, but it'll hold it good enough. Let's go give it a try. That is locked in there firmly. There it is.
Okay, it's all done, and uh, we're going to demonstrate what it's capable of doing. I can put a piece of stock in there, and it's hitting the rod on the depth stop. And if I want a whole bunch of these the same length, I can just face it off like that. Lock my carriage, of course. Put another piece in there. Do the same thing. You could do the same thing if you were cutting them off with a cutoff tool or putting snap ring grooves in or o-ring grooves, whatever. It's a really handy thing to have. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining me and be sure and subscribe. Oh, and ring that bell. That way you'll get notifications on new videos.